The atomic bombs have a colorful history that includes teamwork, intelligence, blood, and two planes each containing one bomb. Yet with so little resources to use, the atomic bomb was developed despite the setbacks that hindered the scientists attempting to create the world's most powerful weapon. Among these is the director of the Manhattan Project, Robert Oppenheimer, who would have never guessed that his leadership would not only shape the 1940s, but would still leave a huge legacy on today's world. The atomic bomb proved that nuclear power could be used in military tactics, yielding devastating results. The battles of World War II quickly escalated, and with the discovery of atomic power, it became obvious that this new and powerful energy, if harnessed, could provide whoever held it with advantage in the war. This knowledge led America and Germany doing a major race to find the most destructive weapon and changing the tide of the war for good. They first had to think of how they are going to achieve this nearly impossible feat. The idea for a research of an atomic bomb, despite the popular belief, came from the Germans. American scientists were worried about the formation of a nuclear weapon in Germany. Germany is said to have been trying to purify uranium isotope 235, which could be used as a component in a nuclear weapon. In response to this, physicist Albert Einstein proposed to President Roosevelt asking for a weapon to be developed that could rival the Germans researching. Roosevelt agreed with them, and the formation of the atomic bomb known as the Manhattan Project was created and the funds were established to create the deadliest weapon in history. There were Americans suffered a great number of casualties in taking the various islands going up towards Japan. And the last one we went in was in Okinawa and there was lots of casualties and so forth. So the, America was building up to assault Japan Japan, the Americans formed the Manhattan Project and originally worked out in Manhattan, hence the name. It was in New York that the biggest step was completed. Scientist Enrico Fermi found that chain reactions are possible. A chain reaction is when nuclear fission between atoms are done simultaneously. This even brought to light that there has to be some way to contain the neutrons when shooting off. While the Americans had cadmium, the Germans, however, had access to heavy water water of more hydrogen atoms that contain the neutrons much more efficiently. With the research completed, it was time to pick a location. The area needed to be rurally located, yet close enough to a town for supplies. The area picked was located in New Mexico, the Los Alamos Laboratory. This laboratory was up in action after being built, and the emerging leaders showcased their qualities. The first leader to showcase his abilities was Robert Oppenheimer. While at Los Alamos, under the leadership of Robert Oppenheimer, the atomic bomb's chemical composition was slowly forming. The first step was found by scientist James Chadwick, who discovered that neutrons were not repelled by similarly charged particles. A year later, Hungarian physicist Leo Szarald realized by the information found by Chadwick that if we could find an element that is split by neutrons and would give off two more when it split, the element could successfully sustain a nuclear reaction. Later down the road, scientist Enrico Fermi unknowingly finds the perfect element, uranium isotope 235. This element with its nuclear fission capabilities could be used to give a devastating explosion, the base of an atomic bomb's idea. The concept of the bomb is that two cannons face an element exactly opposite each other and fire neutrons that would activate a concept called fission, the splitting of atoms causing an explosion. The creation of the bomb had to have strict leadership as the scientists were working with highly dangerous chemicals and they must be very precise. Otherwise, confusion could be planted and in turn, it could possibly jeopardize not only the project, but their lives. While the Americans made steady progress with their atomic bomb project, the Germans struggled to move forward in their process of making their bomb. Despite this, the Americans sat there behind the Germans and responded accordingly. They weighed their options, and the most viable option was to destroy the Germans' containment production. This soon led to the Operation Destroy Vermouk, a heavy water protection lab in Norway. This plant had a long history behind it. The plant itself was destined to be a fertilizer company but a man named Norse Hydro saw potential in developing heavy water and they decided to follow suit and convert the fertilizing plant to a heavy water plant. This plant posed a serious issue to the Allies and they sent raids to destroy the plant. These countries include Norway, Britain, and America. They all launched attacks on this facility, but only two succeeded. The first success was from Norway when six Norwegian people, known as the Gunnersight Raid Team, successfully raided the plant. Over the course of two years, America was also trying to destroy the Germans, and more importantly, the ability for the Germans to make an atomic-powered weapon. The Americans decided to bomb a production lab as essential to a nuclear bomb. Under the leadership of General Leslie Groves, the Air Force had protected daylight bombing by their training in the United Kingdom, so they planned a large attack on the Vermouth plant in Norway. On November 16th, 
1943, the Allied forces sent 143 B-17 flying fortresses over the Vermouth plant. When releasing bombs, only 18 bombs actually hit the Vermouth plant and the other 70 tons crashed and destroyed part of the city. This disguised victory was truly a defeat for the Americans. The obvious failure was here. The Allies sent bombers without any planning or preparation and as a result, the Vermouth plant sustained no serious damage and the city was almost destroyed. The lack of leadership had to be fixed, so they trained and appointed the Gunnerside Raid Team, a group of trained raiders created solely to destroy the Vermouth, which they did with relative ease since they had the preparation and leadership. The Germans, having lost in their various missions, surrendered to the Allied forces, marking the end of the war in Europe. However, the bomb had been built for a purpose, so American leaders planned on using it against the last remaining enemy. Japan was bombed, and having thought it was routine, and as a result, the leader of Japan didn't take special measures. Their lack of preparation brought their demise as the Americans dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. The nuclear bomb it was, was developed, and Truman had a decision had to be made by President Truman. The drop at Hiroshima is very effective at alerting the Japanese that America has a very dangerous and lethal arsenal that can be transported in one plane, yet to wipe out entire cities. The first bomb, named Little Boy, left devastating effects as well as alerting the Japanese about just how serious American leaders were at forcing the Japanese to surrender. When it exploded, it was as strong as 15,000 tons of TNT explosives, and it left 5 square miles of destruction in its wake. When Japan failed to respond in a timely manner, the second bomb, which was already made, was loaded and named Fat Man. This bomb was to be dropped by a B-29 named Boxcar at 11 o'clock in the morning. Fat Man was a famous bomb that was dropped after being shown off to the public in America. Fat Man was a plutonium bomb weighing 10,800 pounds and has a length of 10 feet 8 inches. This bomb works by firing neutrons toward plutonium instead of uranium in a very controlled manner to achieve chain reaction shortly after being primed. This bomb was planned to be dropped by a plane named Boxcar and was destined to hit Nagasaki. When dropped, the target had missed by more than a mile and still ended up destroying half the city. Fat Man unleashed devastating damage on the Japanese city of Nagasaki, lowering the population of the city from 422,000 people to only 383,000 in just a split second. Many died after this due to the radiation and the later effect of starvation. This bomb vaporized anything within a half mile diameter demolishing everything within a mile diameter and then blazes going out as far as 3 miles in diameter. This bomb made the Emperor of Japan unconditionally surrender and that day became known as VJ Day, also known as Victory Over Japan Day. Today, countries on earth are never at peace. There will never be any satisfaction knowing that at any moment a single bomb could wipe out your home city. However, military leaders such as Brigadier General John Rip Collins believe that this nuclear weapon was needed in the Pacific Campaign. And there's no question in my mind and the minds of all my friends, military and civilian, that he was entirely justified in dropping the two bombs on, on Japan. Even through the war and the bombings, one thing remains true. Without the brave leadership of Robert Oppenheimer and the teamwork of the scientists at Los Alamos, Germany could rule and we may not be free, but under a much different form of government.